Hi everyone. In this video, we are going to discuss in detail the types of anther based on the number of lobes present in them and then the transverse section of anther. So based on the number of lobes present in anther, there are two types of anther, monothecus and dithecus. We know that uh, in flower, there is this male reproductive uh, structure called stamen. Stamen has two uh, parts, anther and filament. Okay, So there are two types of anther based on the number of lobes present in them, monothecus anther and dithecus anther. Here the meaning of this term mono is one and uh, di means two. And this term thecus comes from another term called theca. Okay, And the meaning of this term theca is cavity present inside the lobe. Okay, cavity means the empty space present inside the lobe. Okay, now what happens in monothecus anther is, for example, this is monothecus anther. Okay, so uh, in monothecus anther, only one lobe is present. This entire is one lobe. Okay, and uh, filament is there. Okay, inside this uh, monothecus anther or inside this lobe, a empty space is there. Cavity is present. Okay, and in this cavity, there are actually two pollen sacs or two microsporangia okay microsporangia or pollen sacs okay so in monothecus anthers there are two microsporangia present inside the cavity or inside the theca okay and these microsporangia or pollen sac actually helps in the uh, formation of pollen grains okay this is actually the space inside anther where the entire formation and the development of pollen grains take place okay so this monothecus anther generally it is single lobed and with one theca okay it is single lobed and in uh, one lobe inside one lobe we have one theca and in one theca you we have two uh, pollen sacs or two uh, microsporangia Hence, monothecus anthers, they are bisporangiate, okay? Bi means two, sporangiate means microsporangia. So, as there are two microsporangias present inside the theca of monothecus anther, they are called bisporangiate, okay? And the example is hibiscus, okra, cotton, etc., okay? Dithecus anther means, di means two, and theca means the cavity present inside the lobe, so this dithecus anther is actually having two lobes and inside each lobe we have one cavity okay for example this is uh, these are the two uh, these are actually the two lobes of anther okay and uh, this is one lobe first lobe maybe and this one is second lobe okay and we know that inside each lobe we have two cavities, uh, we have two uh, microsporangia, that's compulsory. So here you have, uh, in first lobe you have two microsporangia and in second lobe also you have two microsporangia or pollen sac. So inside dithecus anther, there are total four microsporangias or pollen sacs present, okay. Hence these uh, dithecus anthers, they are called tetrasporangiate anthers okay they are actually tetrasporangiate the meaning of term tetra is four and sporangiate means microsporangia or pollen sac present inside them okay and the example is rose mustard solanum solanum tuberosum is actually the botanical name of potato plant okay this uh, slide here shows the image of monothecus and uh, dithecus anther okay you can make out here this monothecus anther is having uh, one single lobe, okay, and here you have two microsporangias, okay. This dithecus anther is having two lobes, okay, this one is one lobe and this is the second lobe, okay, and it has four microsporangia. Hence, these monothecus anthers are called uh, bisporangiate as they have only two microsporangia and these dithecus anthers, they are called tetrasporangiate okay as they have four microsporangias or pollen sacs next we will discuss about the ts of anther the meaning of term ts is transverse section okay and how to take transverse section is 
for example here you have this anther okay this is uh, the bilobed anther and you have to cut this anther from the center okay you have to cut this uh, anther from the center along the width okay along the width or you can say you know uh, along the width or you can say the circumference or the circle of this anther okay when you cut this anther along the width and take a thin section and observe it under microscope okay so then you get the transverse section of anther and this transverse section of anther is actually uh, you know a very interesting structure as it has different layer of cells or tissues present in them okay uh, this is actually uh, the ts of bilobed anther okay and uh, as you are already aware this dithecus anther is actually having two lobes in it okay dithecus anther is having two lobes in it okay so here uh, this left side okay uh, the diagram of this uh, left side represents uh, one lobe okay and here this right side represents the second lobe of the anther okay and both the lobes of this anther they are actually connected to each other okay both the lobes of anther they are attached to each other with the help of a tissue called connective tissue okay so here connective tissue is present this uh, black color tissue is actually known as connective tissue okay and the function of connective tissue is this is actually a sterile tissue remember this is actually a sterile tissue and its function is to only attach the two lobes of dithecus anther okay it is called sterile uh, sterile does not mean that these cells are dead no these cells are living cells but they are called sterile because being in anther because as they are present in anther they are present in anther but they do not take part in the process of reproduction okay that means they do not take a part in the formation of these male reproductive gametes called uh, pollen grains okay hence they are called sterile tissue the function of connective tissue is only to uh, just join or attach the lobes of two lobes of this dithecus anther as we have uh, discussed in the previous slide this uh, dithecus anther is actually having four microsporangia okay it is having four microsporangia or pollen sacs so you can see here this is first one second third and fourth now each microsporangia here is actually covered with the outermost layer of single cell okay outermost layer made up of a single cell a very thin single cell which is called epidermis okay so this is the outermost layer of the cells present in uh, present around uh, uh, around uh, the entire anther okay present around the entire anther and this is called epidermis next to this epidermis just next to this epidermis we have another layer of cells and this layer of cell is known as endothecium okay we will look into the functions little later first just understand the structure the outermost layer of cell present around the entire anther is called epidermis next to this anther there is another layer of uh, same type of cells present which is called endothecium endo means inside okay and epi means outside or epi means like you know the covering the border okay or outside and endo means inside now after endothecium there are two to three layers of cells okay in few anthers it is two to three or maybe in some anthers it is three to four so there are actually three to four layer of cells similar type of cells and these uh, la layer are known as middle layer okay there are three to four uh, layer of uh, same type of cells and this layer are called middle layer okay and inside middle layer we have another very important uh, types of uh, very important layer made up of like you know uh, a pointed a triangular shape of cells okay and this layer is known as tapetum so this is actually the layer made by the cells of tapetum okay this is actually the innermost layer tapetum and the cells of this tapetum is actually pointed uh, uh, like this okay pointed towards the 
center okay so tapetum is actually a very important uh, layer of cells present inside this microsporangia or around the microsporangia this is because tapetum is nutritive in function okay it actually provides nourishment to the developing pollen grains inside this microsporangia okay and inside this tapetum we actually have this uh, cells and the cells together makes a tissue which is called sporogenous tissue okay this is called sporogenous tissue okay inside the sporogenous tissue actually you know microspore mother cells are present and these microspore mother cells helps in the formation of microspores and these microspores they give rise to pollen grain okay so let's look into the function of each layer in detail the outermost uh, uh, layer of cells present around microsporangia or anther is known as epidermis okay so epidermis is the outermost layer of the anther and it is one cell thick this we obviously we uh, know this already and the function of this epidermis is to provide protection to the inner cells like uh, the cells of maybe like you know endothelium the cells of tapetum the cells of sporogenous tissue the cells of uh, middle layer okay so this epidermis actually provides protection to the inner cells and it also provides structural support to the anther okay and it helps in diffusion of gases and prevents loss of moisture from the anther so it actually helps in uh, diffusion of gases like oxygen and carbon dioxide inside the anther and uh, also prevents water loss from the anther the layer which is present next to the epidermis is uh, endothelium okay uh, this endothelium is again one cell thick layer like epidermis and it is present next to the epidermis the cells of uh, endothelium they have callous thickening in them okay now this is a very important point here to uh, be remembered okay callous is actually a kind of uh, polysaccharide okay polysaccharide means it's a type of carbohydrate or sugar okay so this this callous uh, thickening is actually present in the endothelium layer of uh, anther okay and the function of this uh, callous thickening is this callous thickening actually helps in the dehiscence of anther on maturity okay dehiscence means uh, here is the term dehiscence dehiscence of anther means breaking or like you know bursting of anther at the time of maturity okay when this pollen grains they uh, they they are like you know completely mature or they are completely formed they get completely formed inside the anther okay when they are they become completely mature inside the anther so this anther uh, like you know it uh, splits the wall of the anther splits or breaks and opens up so that this pollen grain can come above okay come outside the anther and come in the direct contact with the pollinating agent okay so this callous thickening present inside the endothelium layer of the anther is very important because this callous thickening on the maturity of anther on the maturation of anther helps in the dehiscence the breaking down or the splitting of the anther okay then next to and endothelium we have 3 to 4 layers of uh, thin walled cells and these uh, all the cells are uh, same okay these are the parenchymatous cell okay these are actually the parenchymatous cell and they provides protection okay they again provide protection and at the maturity when the anther matures at that time this middle layer actually degenerates okay and i have also told you in the previous slide that uh, in dithecus anther we have uh, two lobes and each of this lobe is actually connected or joined with each other with the help of connective tissue this connective tissue is actually a sterile tissue we are calling it sterile not because uh, the cells are dead all the cells of connective tissue is actually uh, are living cells it is called sterile because they do not take part in the process of reproduction okay they are not directly involved in the process of reproduction that means they do not help in the formation of pollen grains okay the only function of this connective tissue is to attach or to join two lobes of the anther together in dithecus anther the next layer of the uh, anther is tapetum okay tapetum actually encloses or covers the uh, spor uh, sporogenous tissue okay now tapetum is the innermost layer of anther wall actually uh, this epidermis endothelium middle layer and then this tapetum 
epitum okay so all these four types of layer of cells in anther they form anther wall okay and the function of this entire anther wall is to provide protection and nourishment to the developing pollen grains inside the microsporangia okay so this tapetum is actually the innermost layer of the anther wall okay and it surrounds the sporogenous tissue okay the cells of the tapetum they have very thick cytoplasm okay that means they have very dense cytoplasm and generally they are like you know uh, they are multinucleate at least two nucleus would be present in each tapetal cell okay there are there are many nucleus present in the tapetal cells okay and this tapetum layer is actually nutritive in function okay it forms the layer of nutritive cells and these uh, nutritive cells they provide nourishment to the developing microspores or developing pollen grains inside the microsporangia okay so this was one function of tapetum that uh, uh, first function of tapetum that these cells are nutritive in nature okay and they provide nourishment to the developing microspores or pollen grains second function of tapetum is like uh, this tapetum actually secretes an enzyme which is called callase okay in previous slide we have discussed about endothecium where we have discussed about callose okay callose is actually a polysaccharide a very tough polysaccharide or you can say a carbohydrate which is present in the cells of endothecium and they help in uh, the dehiscence of anther at the maturity okay so a uh, tapetum layer this secretes an enzyme this secretes an enzyme called callase and this callase enzyme actually dissolves callose of the microspore tetrad okay actually uh, uh, inside this microsporangia sporogenous tissues are present okay for example if this is microsporangia in this we have many cells okay and these cells are actually sporogenous tissue the cells make sporogenous tissues okay and these cells are actually uh, known as microspore mother cells okay m m c okay and the function of these microspore mother cell is these microspore mother cell actually divides and gives rise to microspore okay they divide and forms microspore these microspore mother cells they are actually deployed and they divide by the process of meiosis meiosis is a type of cell division in which the number of chromosomes are reduced to half okay in the daughter cells so these microspore mother cells they divide by uh, the process of meiosis and gives rise to microspore microspores are also called pollen grains okay so this uh, microspore mother cells they divide by meiosis and forms actually microspore tetrad that means four microspores or four pollen grains are actually present together like this here you can see in the diagram and these four microspores they are actually attached together due to the presence of callose in between them okay this entire pink color structure dotted structure okay this entire pink color dotted structure is actually known as is actually callose and this uh, the thickening of this callose is present between these microspore tetrad okay now this tapetal uh, cells the cells of this tapetum they release an enzyme called callase and this enzyme helps in uh, dissolving the callose uh, polysaccharide callose polysaccharide present between these microspore tetrads so once this callose dissolves now this pollen grains are uh, present as an individual and they are free to move or free to carried away from by their pollinating agents okay another function of this uh, tapetum is the cells of tapetum they generally secretes a kind of structure called ubish bodies okay so uh, they secretes a kind of structure called ubish bodies okay and the another name of this ubish body is orbicules so this uh, ubish bodies are also known as orbicules and this ubish bodies are generally coated with a kind of uh, biological polymer called sporopollenin this name ubish bodies are released by the cells of uh, tapetum and these ubish bodies are also known as orbicules and these ubish bodies are actually coated with a kind of polymer called sporopollenin okay 
and this sporopollenin is the most resistant substance known in the living world okay in this in the entire living world uh, you know one of the most resistant substance is actually sporopollenin okay and this sporopollenin is important because sporopollenin actually forms the exine of the pollen grain here you can see in the right side of the picture this is actually a pollen grain okay and this orange color layer uh, present around this pollen grain is actually the layer of exine okay exine is made up of uh, sporopollenin sporopollenin is actually a biological pyramid made up of carbon hydrogen and oxygen okay and the function of this exine is to protect the male gamete present inside pollen grain to provide protection to the male gamete for example if this pollen grain is carried uh, by any of the if uh, when this pollen grain is carried by any of the pollinating agent like wind water insects bees okay anything so uh, this pollen grain until and unless it won't uh, find favorable conditions okay it will not uh, germinate uh, okay this pollen grain will until unless it will not find uh, the suitable stigma it will not germinate okay so what prevents this pollen grain or what keeps this pollen grain safe till the time pollen grain reaches favorable conditions or or you can say what keeps this pollen grain safe uh, under unfavorable conditions okay and that is actually exine and another very important function of exine is it prevents the desiccation desiccation means removal of water of uh, uh, prevention of uh, loss of water from the pollen grain okay so these were actually uh, the cells of the anther uh, anther wall these were actually the layer of the anther wall epidermis we have epidermis outermost then we have uh, endothelium we have middle layer and then we have tapetum okay now inside this tapetum sporogenous tissues are present okay the center of each uh, microsporangia okay we have studied about microsporangia okay we have discussed about microsporangia microsporangia is plural and singular is microsporangium so in the center of each microsporangium sporogenous tissues are present okay this sporogenous tissues they actually gets uh, differentiated and they form a microspore mother cell another name for microspore mother cell is mmc okay the short form is mmc microspore mother cell and this microspore mother cell is also called pollen mother cell because it gives rise to pollen grains or microspores so each microspore mother cell undergoes uh, each microspore mother cell that under undergoes meiosis a type of cell division and forms microspore tetrad which further develops into pollen grains okay which further gives rise to pollen grain so in detail about this uh, formation of microspores from uh, uh, microspore mother cell or pollen uh, mother cell about this we will learn in the next video okay this process is known as microsporogenesis and we will discuss about microsporogenesis in detail in the next video take care till then bye bye